Welcome back to the pod, guys. It's Austin. I got another episode for you this week. And this week, I kind of, I want to talk about this concept that's gaining a lot of traction out there in the world, the concept of the gray man, right? Uh, you see online in articles, this mentioned a lot. Um, I'm looking at an uh, old EDC magazine from last winter. Honestly, it did an article on it. Uh, you hear it mentioned in videos a lot, and now you're hearing it mentioned on podcasts, including this one. So what is this concept and why is everybody talking about it? You know, as as uh, ideas grow and become more popular, you hear about them more. And why is this one so popular? Why is it being brought up so much? Because in a world where we find ourselves uh, subject to more laws, right? Gun control laws, gun regulations, all of that stuff. You need to find ways to protect yourself. And that's not to say go out and learn karate. I think you should do that. I, I've actually thought about it. <clears throat> but um, how can you protect yourself without even getting in the fight? It's an interesting question to pose, right? How do you protect yourself? How do you defend yourself w- without getting in a fight? And that is through this gray man concept. Essentially, it's like natural camouflaging, right? You ever watch uh, like National Geographic? Uh, you see these, um, you know, frogs and lizards and stuff, and you know, chameleons, right? They can camouflage themselves. Um, either it's either as a defense mechanism to uh, protect them from predators, or if you, they are the predator, it's to disguise them so that their prey comes along, doesn't realize that they're there, and allows them to attack, right? And obviously, <clears throat> excuse me. The military has been, uh, you know, adapting to and, and using this for, I mean, decades, right? Um, ghillie suits, just regular camo, right? I mean, fatigues are, are all camo um, for, for those reasons. Uh, but how does that really translate into what we do every day? Okay, that's where this all kind of comes together. And it's like a synergy of modern fashion um, with military tactics and a little bit of psychology and some science, right? Uh, there has to be a certain level of science because the, the very point of this is how as humans, we, we recognize and perceive things uh, and how we react to certain stimulus. So the gray man concept essentially is uh, to blend in, right? You appear as a normal person. Um, you're not memorable for any reason. Uh, and t- actually to quote this article from last winter's issue of EDC magazine, you're invisible in plain sight right in front of you, but nowhere to be seen. Like you're just another person blended in the crowd. Uh, and in this way, it allows you to lower that victim profile, right? You're, you're less likely to be targeted because you just blend in with everything else. You're not targeted as somebody who has a lot of valuables, as somebody who's weak, as somebody who's vulnerable, as somebody who's any kind of good target because you just, you don't, you don't stand out. That, that predator that may be looking to either, I know, rob you or hurt you, uh, you know, human traffic you, whatever, is less likely to key to you um, and, and hopefully to somebody else or something else as bad as it is to say, but you know, you got to worry about yourself and then you do what you can for anyone else. Right. Um, the goal, yeah, it's, it's not to stand out so that if there is an emergency, you aren't the target. And the biggest thing I feel like that we can just write down on the list is, uh, open carry, right. Um, don't have a, a gun on your hip. Nothing screams, Hey, I'm a target more than that. Um, and in a multiple number of ways, it's, uh, if you're looking, if if it's a mass shooter, let's say, uh, if you're one of the guys walking around with a gun on your hip, you now made like the top five list of of his targets because what's he going to do? He's going to take out whoever's going to be shooting back at him. Duh. Um, that's why so many of these incidents, if you look at the statistics and the numbers behind it, most of them last like just a couple of minutes. Um, because at that point, that's when police show up and that's when people start shooting back. And that's also why they happen in a lot of gun free zones, because there's, you know, uh, statistically speaking, way less people that would be shooting back at them. So in order to help blend in, you know, you, you 
don't open carry. And we've talked about that before. Uh, it's just, it's a bad idea. You know, uh, as a, po- a police officer, um, that's not really your choice all the time. But as a regular individual and citizen, that's not a good idea. It, it att- attracts a lot of attention and it raises hostilities. Uh, people are just, as a society right now, we're uncomfortable at the sight of a firearm. So top of the list, just just don't do it, man. Invest in a good holster. Get your CCL. Conceal it, right? Um and then the clothing you wear, right? That's obviously the biggest part of this. Uh, clothing, accessories, we'll, we'll jump into this in a second, but that's that's the real meat of this. If it's done properly, uh, it'll, it'll position you all to either escape or evade any dangerous situation, um, or if necessary, help you to end a dangerous situation if, you know, if you're a concealed carrier and you can intervene uh, in the sake of saving lives, um, you know, if you're not a target, you won't be expected to be the one returning fire. That whole, the idea behind that. Um, so how do you blend in? Um, well, I like think we just said, don't carry a gun. Um, and if you are carrying other gear with you, and we all do, obviously, that's what this whole concept of EDC is about, uh, a knife, right? Obviously not a Marine K-bar, no fixed blade, no stupid goofy sword or anything like that. Just a folding pocket knife. I mean, the the chances of you actually needing to use that for anything other than an administrative task is pretty low anyways. Um, you know, so just whatever your, your folding pocket knife of choice is. Mine right now actually here is, uh, what is this? This is a, uh, it's one of the Kershaw uh, Emerson collaborations. A uh, little folder with the thumb disc and the Emerson wave. It's got a Tonto blade. Uh, it's like, I don't know me three and a quarter inch blade nothing crazy i mean if i had to fight with it i'd probably be okay but it's mostly just here for admin stuff and it's just um the one i've happened to be using right now i got a couple in the rotation um uh, medical gear you know you don't need to be carrying a a giant merce around with the, the big old uh red cross on it let everybody know that you're a medic or um <laughs> for whatever reason when i when i say this i think of uh for those of you that have seen the tiger king series on netflix the episode where one of the employees at the zoo gets their arm uh essentially ends up being bitten off i don't know if it's bitten off or it gets it's badly bitten and has to be amputated but you you hear about this incident and then like the camera jumps over to another scene and when you come back and you see joe exotic the first thing he did was change into his uh like i can't remember if it's bedazzled but his like his emt bomber jacket you know um which i don't think anybody would really uh, hopefully do anything like that, but, uh, your medical gear, keep it simple. I know a lot of guys will run the slim tourniquets, uh, the rats tourniquets through your belt, your belt loops. Um, that's an easy way to conceal that. Uh, I personally have a live the creed, uh, personal IFAC. It's like the size of a, like your dad's wallet, you know, like one of those big, thick, fat, like old man wallets. Um, I got one of those. It's got, uh, some just basic stuff in there, gloves, bandages, uh, a soft tourniquet that I take with me. Um, but it just sits in my back pocket, and unless somebody's, you know, uh, like really paying some solid attention to my hindquarters, they're not going to realize that I got a bulge in each pocket. You know, I got my wallet in one and my med kit in the other, and just blends in, and no one really notices it. Uh, like I was saying, you know, the biggest thing is the wardrobe choices. And <clears throat> guys, if you think about it, what do you remember? when you walk out in public and see people and this is fresh in my mind i actually was out at uh a mall today with my wife wrapping up some christmas shopping um you know and i i love to people watch because you just it's a perfect example of what we're talking about here and even what we talked about a couple episodes back with being aware of your surroundings and being prepared to evade danger in bad situations but um you know most humans have tunnel vision okay uh, you're focused on, I'm going to this store. So I'm trying to get from where I'm at now to that store. And you're really, I mean, sometimes you're looking around, you're window shopping, but you're not particularly fixated on every single person that, that passes you. Okay. Uh, now if you're trained to do this, then that's a different story, but your average human being, uh, we don't notice every little thing that comes by. Um, everything kind of blends in together. Unless there's a strong outside stimulus that's going to, you know, 
catch your eye, get your attention, whether it's uh, somebody being loud or their clothing is loud. Uh, and by loud, I mean, you know, bright colors or the style of the clothing is uh, very distinct. The thing that came to, comes to mind when I think about that is like when I was in high school, we used to have the, uh, I, I'm sure it's probably not a PC term, but we used to call them the goth kids, right? And they used to have like the ultra high, like, uh, leather boots, uh, with the huge platforms and the long trench coats and spikes everywhere and, uh, bright green spike mohawks and stuff like that, you know, and that just attracts a ton of attention. And I think that's kind of the point. Um, but in this instance, it would be a bad thing, right? Um, here's another thing we, we get into like, uh, the term is FUDs, right? As in Elmer Fudd, the legendarily bad hunter. Um, these people that you see in public walking around in like the 511 tactical pants and a lot of those are just khaki or blue or blacks. So they're not that bad, except for the fact that you got like eight pockets on each leg. And that looks weird. It's no longer in vogue or in fashion or in style, whatever, to be wearing cargo pants, cargo jeans, any of that stuff, carpenter pants, whatever, whatever they're, they're called. Uh, that's not a thing anymore. People don't wear those. You know, the only people that wear cargo shorts now are like our dads because that was in style when they were younger and your style progression halts once you have a child, like for the most part, I know for my dad, it pretty much does, <laughs> you know? So, uh, people notice that stuff. If you're walking around wearing stuff like that, um, or camouflage, uh, or, you know, anything, the big old American flag plastered on it sometimes, uh, just depending how it's done. I know Under Armour has a lot of those shirts and, and hoodies and stuff now too. So that's not as big of a deal. Um, but anything, um, you think about like these polo shirts to have, you know, epaulets on the, on the shoulders, uh, you know, fatigue color, uh, like desert tan and stuff like that. Uh, that stuff all sticks out and, and super bright colors too. You know, if you're wearing like a fluorescent yellow beanie with your gray sweatpants and your six different colored Nike high tops and you know, your oversized tall tee or something. Yeah. It's probably going to attract some attention. Uh, as well as not just being very functional, you know, uh, just wear some straight up normal jeans. That's if you want to help, you want to blend in, don't go too far to one side or the other, just some straight up normal, like, uh, Levi. Well, not, I would say not Levi because their CEO is very anti second amendment, but like some Wranglers, maybe, um, I really enjoy the flex fit jeans from American Eagle. I found, uh, that those are very comfortable. Um, and I do highly recommend them if you're looking for some flex fit jeans to make your in the waistband carry a little bit better. Um, but no embellishments on it. I know back, uh, probably 10, 12 years ago, the whole tap out thing and the affliction stuff was real big and guys were starting to have like the Maltese crosses and everything all over everything they wore and almost like, uh, rhinestones or studded whatever on their pockets, on their jeans and everything, or the, the huge rips for guys and everything don't do any of that. Uh, for one, you just look like a huge douchebag, whether you realize it or not. But for two, because it, it attracts a ton of attention. Um, <clears throat> a really good example of this, that I'm going to say this, and you guys that know, know, and those that don't know are going to go, oh, yeah. Okay, the term Marvel Incognito. Okay, I want you to think about, like, any time in any of the Marvel movies, these people have to hide in plain sight. Specifically, I'm thinking the scene with uh, Captain America and the Black Widow uh, in Captain America Civil War. The, uh, and it, it happens in a couple other ones, too. What is, like, the go-to look for these people hiding out in, like, the middle of, like, an Apple store? It is a... Oops, sorry. Turn the phone off. They're hiding out in the middle of an Apple store, and what do they got? They have a... A uh, single color baseball cap with no discernible logo or marking on it. They got a solid color t-shirt and then they got a solid color zip up hoodie over that with a solid color soft shell jacket and some regular wash denim jeans. And then maybe like some, uh, some fakies, you know, some fake glasses or something, you know, Marvel incognito you blend in in plain sight because absolutely nothing you're wearing sticks out one way or the other and attracts zero attention if anything it almost like repels attention because you're so bland and so normal that yeah it's like camouflage if you think about it and you know go back and watch the movie they 
They roll right past the guys looking for him. Nobody realizes it. Okay, that's that's the point. You know, uh, and we talk about making some of these wardrobe considerations and stuff for uh, conceal carry. You know, looser clothing or, or bu- like I like button down shirts because it does make it easier to conceal while carrying appendix and stuff. But don't you know, you kind of give off, you start to give off a certain vibe. You don't need to have the oversized plaid shirt with the, the Solomon, uh, you know, speed cross shoes or whatever. Um, and the, and the jeans, and then you got the, the Casio G-Shock watch turned around backwards and you got the, the 511 or, or uh, black rifle coffee or whatever, uh, company hat on. And you got, uh, like the extra tactical Oakley's or Gators or I'm trying to think there's another it's usually Oakley or Gators. You know, you look basically like a private military contractor without actually being one. Um, and I, and I think to an extent we're all kind of guilty of that, but like, I mean, come on, just tone it down a notch. You'd probably be a lot happier and you actually probably spend a lot less money because some of that stuff's pretty expensive. Um, you know, I was talking about like the Solomon speaker, like Solomon's are, are good shoes. I actually just bought a pair myself. Uh, I got, you know, a couple of pairs of Altamas, which are water resistant, fairly comfortable shoes. I've, I've had Merrill's. I also own a bunch of pairs of Asics, uh, casual, like brown leather shoes and booties for when I have to go into the office, you know, uh, not, not everything I have has a tactical purpose or thought behind it. The big thing I would say, though, obviously, to stick away from is like the combat boots. And you'd be surprised how many people during even the summer will be caught walking around indoors in shorts with like your desert tan work slash combat boots or the Under Armour, you know, whatever brand combat boots. And it's like, okay, seriously, Uh, you don't have anything else you can wear. You can't like pick some Chuck Taylors or something that's just going to blend in a little bit better. It makes you feel any better. That's what the seals wear, right? Because they can roll up and get tucked in a pocket somewhere, or they used to, anyways. I mean, if it makes you feel better, I just I don't I don't get that. And then, and like I say, in the hats, you know, um, I, it's cool. You want to have like the American flag and and all this this cool stuff or um, the Punisher skull. But if you think about trying to the target of this, the goal is to blend in. Um, the best things to do are either solid colors or honestly local sporting teams doesn't have to be local sporting teams because um thanks to pop culture and i'm thinking of a lot of rappers because i'm you know i grew up in the early 2000s and stuff you can wear whatever hat you want and no one's gonna look at you twice you can be you wear the the la dodgers uh if you're really a despicable human being you can wear a yankees hat um you know you want to rep the detroit tigers uh making a comeback you know hey cool if you're in Chicago, wear some Chicago gear. Or, you know, if you're in the Midwest, wear, wear a Midwest team. Now, I I notice when I uh, see people wearing out-of-region sporting apparel. You know, it always looks weird to me that we have people that go out of their way to buy, like, San Francisco 49ers gear, and you live in Michigan. Like, okay, I could get it if you lived in California in, like, the Oakland area or the San Diego area, and maybe that's just not your team. Or you're in Michigan, and because, uh, you know, the Detroit Lions are absolute trash, you decide you're going to be a cheesehead and back the Packers or the Bears or the Vikings, whatever, you know, fine. Like, that's that doesn't really stick out. Um, sporting teams are normal. Um, you know, basic clothing companies are normal stuff like uh, billabong or nike or adidas that stuff all blends in because it's just athletic gear um tactical companies scream for attention they just do or if it's a, a big old patch of velcro on the front that looks like you can stick a morale patch on it probably not that great okay um so it's just it's be as plain as you can essentially um and getting away from like your personal gear you know what your excess, I guess, not really getting away from your personal gear, but getting away from your clothing. Um, look at what you carry with you uh, in terms of accessories. Like if you're going to wear a watch and you want to wear a G-Shock, that's cool. Not a big deal. Um, maybe don't go with uh, obnoxious bright colors. Uh, you know, don't go with uh, the largest diver pilot's watch you can you can find. Um probably want to avoid anything extra flashy i'm saying uh stuff like a rolex you can i know there's a lot of guys that again have been contractors that that prefer to wear a rolex because then you can trade it for 
uh, a vehicle or whatever. You know, I've, I've heard that from people. And, dude, if you can afford a Rolex and, you, you know, fuck it, you want to wear a Rolex, dude, more power to you. If that's your one uh, compromise on this whole thing, then, you know, you know, if you can afford a Rolex, then go for it, man. <laughs> you officially have my blessing, if that means anything at all to you. And it shouldn't. Um, but if you look at your other gear, right, I'm thinking – like, uh, let's, let's talk about like backpacks, right? Cause that's really popular now. Um, for whatever reason, dudes are wearing fanny packs again. Uh, I mean, I know it's like a dig at Sam cause he's full dad mode and he's got the tactical fanny pack and he loves that thing. You know, he's got like uh, decoy treats in there for the kids and like, you know, he can carry a spare mag in there if he has to, you know, treats and baby wipes and all the good, all the good stuff in there for all of his adventures. Um, and that's not going to stick out as much if part of your EDC is also three kids under the age of five. Uh, but if it's just you walking around a mall with a fanny pack on, you kind of look like a creep. Uh, you just do. So maybe avoid that. Also, talk about like backpacks and stuff. Nothing with molly webbing, mor- morale patches, or that looks like it belongs uh, hiking up a mountain is a good idea. Okay. Um, I know at one point women, it was like a, it was a big thing for you to have the huge purses. You know, it was like a garbage bag with fancy handles. I remember some girls I went to high school with that like had legit full bags of potato chips and a package of cookies and their purse and all that, like the amount of crap they fit in these things. I was absolutely astounded by, uh, and they go, Oh no, this is great. This is, this is amazing. I'm like, yeah, cause you don't need a locker anymore. You carry all your shit with you from class to class. Like yeah, I'm sure you love it. Your back might not, but that's not really the trend anymore. And if you're talking about trying to blend in and also be light and evasive, probably not the best idea. Uh, speaking as a guy, um, sling bags, single strap bags are starting to come, uh, back more into like the mainstream. I know I'm starting to see a lot more pop culture figures where some of them, they're not as big. Um, but it's mostly just to hold your shit because uh, guys are wearing pants with no pockets now or, you know, whatever. It's a status symbol. You can get like a Supreme brand. I, don't, I have no idea what makes those so special or so expensive. Uh, but I know those are, you know, super pricey and starting to get more and more common. Um, but there's companies now that are producing bags like that to fill that need for the rest of us that can't afford all that extra crazy stuff. Uh, like Vertex comes to mind. And I posted on the Instagram a while back. I have uh, a Vertex sling bag that I got. Uh, it's a Transit 2.0, I think. It's a summoner to the Transit. I want to say it's the Transit. Um, <clears throat> but it's in like a uh, navy blue, nothing crazy. You can like flip around the front flap on it so you have molly webbing all over the front, which I don't do because that just screams attention. Um, you have like a row of Velcro at the bottom to throw... Uh, morale patches on if you want i think i threw on like the uh the angry smiley face or something like it's the uh it you know it looks like uh if you've ever seen the music video for john bon jovi's have a nice day it looks like that like smirking face in black and white instead of red and black uh i threw that on there because i thought it looked cool and it's not gonna you know it, no mullen lob or whatever like no come and take it or uh no step on snack or anything ultra tactical or whatever. I mean, try and blend in, you know, have fun with it to an extent and get something that's going to last. The The good bags, the Vertex, the uh, Victos, stuff like that, uh, Kne gear, those, those bags are all pretty well made and have compartments built into them where you can even put soft armor, stuff that'll stop pistol caliber rounds, um, which is a good idea as well. And they don't stick out. They don't scream extra tactical. They're not camouflage. I mean, I'm sure you could probably get them that way. Uh, but that again, it defeats the purpose of what we're talking about here. Um, you know, there's no molly webbing, no 511, no condor, no morale patches, anything that's going to scream for attention. You don't have to have like a, uh, <laughs> like a water bladder thing running through it. So you can take a drink while you're walking on the mall. Cause that looks goofy as shit. Um, you don't have like a, an IR signaling device clipped onto the top of the shoulder strap. Uh, there's no like waist belt, or, or at least if there is, you're not using it. I know, again, some of these sling bag, bags have like a stabilization strap you can put on. It's not really necessary if you're just walking around the mall. It's more like if you're backpacking or hiking somewhere, uh, like a dual purpose type thing. 
but again, not needed. Um, and, and, and okay, so let's go even a little bit more past that, right? Uh, your vehicle, uh, you know, I see it, you know, uh, every day pretty much you know at least some vehicle that has some kind of uh, gun company or some kind of two-way lifestyle sticker on it you know um my wife and i walk our dog daily or we try to you know it gets harder now because it's december and in michigan if you guys didn't realize one of the northern states here it gets pretty freaking cold so we don't get to walk them every day like we would like to anymore but i got a neighbor a couple doors down probably seven or eight doors down i want to say he's got like a toyota fj cruiser no big deal, except the back of the car has like six stickers on the back of it. And at least one of them I've recognized as a Haley strategic sticker. It's like the half dragonfly thing, you know, his logo, which is cool. I'm like, that's awesome. I'm happy to see people, you know, embracing that, except that that to me is like a, a giant example of, hey, you're kind of telegraphing your situation to anybody around you, you know, uh, Further down the street, got an older gentleman, a couple of things that stick out. And I'm not saying you need to live your whole life to be completely vanilla, but he's got some uh, <clears throat> some SIG stickers. He's got the SIG Legion sticker on the back of his truck, or he did. I don't know if he still does. Um, got a flag pull out front with an American flag, which I, that already one sends some messages because I feel like a lot of people don't have flag pulls anymore. But he's got an American flag, um, and then he has like a Trump 2020 flag, and then he has a German Shepherd or uh, one of those uh, breeds that looks similar. I'm trying to think the one they use for the military. It's not a, uh, it's not German Shepherd. It's something else, um, some of the B. But anyways, I digress. Uh, super well trained dog that just sits around the porch with him, no leash, no nothing. Is very very well trained. Uh, so it kind of screams either former police dog or former military dog or, you know what I mean, especially because he's just an older guy. Um, maybe he's former law enforcement. Uh, just off what I was able to glean uh, in the 10 seconds that I walked by his house when I'm taking my dog out during the summer. So that's a pretty good example of how what the, the kinds of messages that you send to people just based on appearances. Uh, but if you keep all those stickers on your car, you know, that's really telling people a lot of different things like, hey, that person owns guns. So, yes, there's one school of thought that is, okay, well, that person's going to know not to F with me because I got a gun. And you, you might be right. What that could also tell somebody is follow this person and wait till they go into a gun free zone and then break into their car or wait follow this person until they go back home and then break into their house while they're either sleeping or at work or whatever, because they probably don't have every single gun that they own on their person at all times. And then while you personally are still safe, you've been burgled and you're, I don't know, I'm assuming probably several thousand dollars worth of firearms and or accessories are now stolen and good luck getting all of that back covered by your insurance company. I can only imagine the things they'd have to say about it, you know, because insurance is a scam no matter how you slice it. Um, so consider those things, you know, really. And also, I mean, to that point, while we're talking about it, please invest in a decent car safe for your firearms. Uh, way too many people you see it posted all over Facebook in the different like EDC pages or, you know, Glock Nation or AR-15 builders, whatever, people have their cars broken into and their firearms stolen because they put it in their center console overnight and left it there and forgot. Or they threw it in their glove compartment and left it there and forgot while they were, you know, downtown shopping or at a concert or something. And yeah, if you guys didn't know, concerts and large gatherings, mall parking lots, uh, movie theater parking lots. I've had my car broken into, uh, this was shit, uh... 15 years ago, probably, uh, I went to go see a movie, uh, at the end of the street of the subdivision that I was, you know, living in like three minutes from home, had somebody break into the, my car and steal like, I mean, all my loose change and a couple pairs of sunglasses. I mean, I was like 16, 17. I didn't have anything that was that valuable, but it happens when I was living at my parents' house, when I was 19 and 21, I had my car broken into, uh, I had backpacks stolen at the time I was, uh, I was drumming, I was doing band stuff full time. And, uh, it really upset me cause I lost a couple practice pads, stuff that were like 40 to $80 practice pads. Uh, you know, a hundred some odd dollar metronome that I use for practicing, uh, a bunch of drumsticks that, uh, I use for playing, performing, whatever. I had to replace those out of my own pocket, 
uh, the cost of the bag itself, you know, and, and so whoever, whoever took that was looking for like a laptop or, or something like that, or a digital camera. Cause this was a while ago, you know, uh, they don't care. They just grab the bag and take off. So think about that kind of stuff. You know, you want to make your vehicle seem ordinary, right? You want to have it blend in, but you know, use what you got, uh, lock it up. You know, don't, uh, if you drive like a Honda Civic or something, it doesn't need to look like it just drove out of Fast and the Furious, which I also went through that phase. For those that know me that are listening, I definitely used to drive lowered Honda Civics for a little while. I don't anymore. Um, and it was really funny because I'm like 6'3", and like 250, and squeezing down in this uh, Honda Civic coupe that you could barely slide a pack of cigarettes under is pretty comical. Um, but I digress. Um so this is really, uh, this is, this is important, you know, because you can, you can do all this stuff to, to mitigate your risk, to, uh, protect yourself and keep yourself out of harm's way without pulling a knife, without pulling a gun, without committing hours and hours and hours of your life to dry fire practice, which you should still do. However, you know, you should still practice with your, your gear and your kit and everything. But the whole point about being a concealed carrier and being prepared is to mitigate risk um, and, and maximize benefit, right? So why not? You know, I'm not saying you can't have nice clothes and you can't dress the way you want, but maybe make this a consideration when you're out shopping for clothes. Maybe you don't put on, you know, your, your fanciest jewelry to go to the mall or go out to dinner because uh, it just screams for attention. And I get it. Sometimes you're going to, you got work dinners, you got weddings and stuff. And, but I mean that you just, you lower the percentage uh, of the, the, the time that you're out wearing it. And you also then lower the percentage of the chance that something's going to happen, whether you're going to lose that expensive piece of jewelry or that you're going to be targeted because of it. If that makes sense, you know, it's all about uh, mitigating the risk <clears throat> and, because this is becoming so popular, right? You're seeing it talked about by industry professionals that do private training, um, law enforcement, because obviously if you're undercover, the whole point is to blend in. Uh, private contractors uh, working, you know, I think like the CIA, like 13 hours, right? The movie 13 hours. Those guys dress pretty freaking normal. You know, I know the one scene you see Max Martini, uh, the night of the attack, he's wearing like a burgundy uh, polo and some khakis. That's it, you know, or uh, some of these guys wearing uh, a short sleeve button up with uh, like a plaid pattern on it and some khaki shorts and a pair of uh, Solomons or something. You know, nothing crazy. It doesn't need to be anything crazy like that. And, you know, they did just fine. Well, within reason, most of them walked away from it, but everything was, was functional, right? Uh, so in this effort, People have realized that this is something that isn't uh, going away. That it's not just a fad, that there's a lot of merit to this concept. There's a lot to be gained from it, and there's a lot of benefit from it. So, of course, people have found ways to monetize it. <laughs> um, but uh, and that's a benefit for us too, right? Because now we have more options to carry the way we want, to maximize comfort while we're doing it, um, and then, again, maximize benefit, mitigate risk. Things like conceal carry clothing. Uh Lexi, my wife, she just ordered on Black Friday. She got a great deal from, uh, I think it's Girls With Guns Clothing Company online. I think that's what it's called. She ordered uh, some leggings that I think have a concealed carry uh, holster built into them, um, as well as having pockets on the outside, like normal admin pockets, which is, from my understanding, a uh, huge Pockets are huge for women, apparently, as men were spoiled by having normal pockets. Um, she got a top which it's like a uh like a, a hooded long sleeve shirt and it's got the hoodie pocket in the front but there's a cutout on the inside of it so you can access your appendix uh where your firearm is your appendix carry through the shirt to get your hand down into it and draw it you know you clear the garment with one hand and draw with the other hand not the most ideal thing but uh definitely obviously beneficial in that kind of situation should you need to. Um, then also got a, uh, weather, weatherproof jacket, uh, like, uh, it's not really a soft shell, but like a rain jacket type thing, an insulated rain jacket that has, uh, pockets specifically built onto the inside of it on both sides for, um, a firearm 
and it's got a retention strap on it, I think. And then it's got pockets for magazines or, you know, a flashlight, whatever you want to carry. But it looks like normal clothes. It doesn't scream, you know, army fatigues. It's not camouflage. It doesn't have 5'11 stitched all over it, which, by the way, really irritates me that for a company that is supposed to be putting out the premier level gear for people that want to tactically carry and concealed carry, you guys sure threw your logo an awful lot on on fucking everything. And I get it because you want people to know when there's a certain amount of marketing and stuff that goes with it. But if you were really into it, you'd get rid of that. And I think they have some stuff they're starting to get away from the marketing and stuff, but it's just like, come on. It seems like very common sense, you know, um, <clears throat> that's that point. Excuse me. Uh, I think the bigger companies start to realize it. Uh, I don't think really Victos is one of the bigger ones. Uh, but they're, they're starting to, uh, make everything a little bit more subtle, right? Uh, I get their, their stuff in the mail. I actually like their stuff a lot. Um, I got a couple of their hats, uh, made pretty well. I'll probably be spending more money with them. Um, but companies that like 511 and Condor that for years were like, here, this is all tactical clothing or Rothko. And it's like, okay, well, anybody wearing this sticks out like a sore thumb because you look like, uh, Keanu Reeves and Jeff Daniels in the first five minutes of the movie Speed. You know, whether it's separate top and pants or not, it looks like you're wearing like a mechanic suit with tactical pockets walking around the mall or walking around the zoo. It's like, okay, well, something's up with this guy. Either he's just goofy or, you know, whatever. Um, And then like we were talking about, you know, bags, packs, they complete all your daily administrative tasks, but they also hold armor, conceal a weapon, uh, one of the nice things about the Vertex bags, and it's not the only one, it's just the one I can speak to because I own it, uh, is that they actually have, a, they call it, I think it's Tactagami is what they call it, but it's, you can fold up the mag carrier and you can fold up the holster to fit a, a wide variety of firearms and magazines. So rather than having to get a custom-made Kydex holder with like a Velcro backer plate that it either screws onto and then sticks into the inside the bag, you can just uh, purchase either the subcompact or normal size uh, for either the holster or the pistol magazines, and then they stick to the inside of the bag. Um, and there's some other ones. I think Maxpedition makes some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool stuff. I think I actually have the Maxpedition mag holders because I couldn't get the Vertex ones at the time. Uh, but they make it so you know you, you cover a wide variety. They're concealed carry size pistols or full size pistols, and they stick into the inside of the bag. So then the front couple pockets, I think two on mine, you know, I can throw some medical stuff in there, some supplies. I think I got a couple chem sticks in there, a compass, maybe like a map. Uh, and then the second pocket, you can throw whatever you need to carry for the day, whether it's just like more snacks or it's got a, a strap in there. You can throw like up to a 15.3, I think, uh, inch laptop can get thrown there and you can strap it in. But then the back pocket is, uh, um, like hook and loop material almost it's like this, this really soft, uh, material that Velcro's, uh, the holsters Velcro to really well. Um, and they make a wide variety of, of accessories for that. There's admin pouches. So if you wanted to Velcro it a certain way so you can get it, get to a tourniquet, you can either shove that in a magazine holder that they make, or you can put it in one of these admin pouches, or you want to, you got a bunch of smaller medical gear you want to shove in there rather than having it in one of the other po- uh, pockets like I do. All kinds of options. Um, I think I got medical shears that I carry in there with the chem sticks and everything. So they make it really modular and it, it's starting to get really well thought out. And this is all, again, in the name of uh, concealed carry and the, the gray man concept, just blending into a crowd. Uh, but, and it, again, it can be used both offensively and defensively. Uh, I, you know, going back to what I said when we first started this, go watch some of the National Geographic documentaries on like Disney+. Plus. Okay, and it's not a new concept, uh, but as the times change, we have to adapt and change with them. And this is a, a really good way, uh, or a really good example, I should say, of how we in the 2A community are adapting to the world around us and being smarter, right? Uh, 20 years ago, this wasn't a thing. It just wasn't because, uh, you know, we were in the middle of the assault weapons ban and concealed carry licenses were harder to get, I feel like, and... Um, and I'm speculating a bit cause I wasn't really, um, I wasn't of legal age on a firearm. We didn't have them in my house. My, my dad, mom, they didn't shoot or anything. My mom still actually hates guns, but 
now that I'm, you know, years later, I'm getting into this and looking at it and, and seeing and hearing the way people carried before, you can see how far things have come in such a short amount of time. Um, and, and you can definitely tell the people that have moved with the times and those that haven't moved with the times, um, because you see these older men, uh, and I was at uh, a city called uh, Frankenmuth uh, here in Michigan. It's like a really large German community, and uh, they really play to the whole kind of like touristy aspect. You can go get like a, one of their famous chicken dinners and stuff. And I remember I was there uh, maybe two and a half months ago, three months ago, with my brother, my wife, and uh, my brother's girlfriend. And we walked into the dining room, and there is this just huge man sitting there just mowing down on some chicken. Um, he's got a, a, a sleeveless t-shirt with suspenders. Uh, and he's got his American flag trucker hat on and he's got a big old ZZ top beard. And then right out in the open facing the doorway. So everybody sees it when they walk in, he's got a like 357 revolver on his hip in a leather holster. And, uh, apparently it's not a, an anti-gun, uh, establishment, which is cool, but that's, that's, you know, we just spent all this time talking about how that's not really conducive to protection, especially if you, you're that big of a person and you're having some problems getting around as it is, you're probably a little bit slow on the draw in your old age. And it's probably not going to do you a whole lot of good if everybody knows you got the gun, you know, but that's, that's the way carrying was. Uh, and now that's not the way carrying is. So you have to, it's like one of these evolve or die type things, you know? Uh, I think about the scenes from, uh, the movie Moneyball with Brad Pitt, right? They talk about, uh, evolve or die kind of a different context, but the message is exactly the same. Uh, and especially now as we, as a society are becoming so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Fearful, I guess, of firearms. I know the the 2A community is doing a lot to try and desensitize people to it, but the, <clears throat> excuse me, the media does a really good job of pushing the fear, pushing the message that guns are the problem. We need to get rid of guns. And you see more and more malls and retail establishments and public places, restaurants, whatever, all moving towards, um, not allowing firearms on the premises. So uh, adapt or die, you know, evolve or die. You gotta, you gotta find better, more creative ways to conceal, uh, to not draw attention to yourself. So that's, that's what the gray man concept is. Uh, and I, and I encourage everybody to, to look more into this and, uh, maybe even examine what you do day in, day out, what you wear, whether it's to the office, if you're somebody working in the office right now, uh, whether it's around your house, around the neighborhood, when you go out shopping, whatever, uh, think about it, you know, and not even in a context of, do I look like I'm carrying a gun, but how much attention am I drawing to myself? You know, does everything you have have a logo on it? You know, think about it. Look at your car. You know, the people that have the, um, <laughs> the family stickers in the back, you know, mom, dad, and like the 12 kids, whatever. Well, I mean, if you're a child molester or somebody trying to, you know, human traffic, that might be a target. Or my students, an honor student at whatever school, that's a pretty dead giveaway. Hey, I got a kid and this is where they're at. Hey, I'll be here picking them up every day around this time. Or, I mean, pre-COVID you would. So, I mean, at first glance, a lot of this doesn't seem too bad. But when you start thinking about it, it sends a lot of messages. Now I kind of understand growing up, like my parents never put bumper stickers on their cars, ever. And I always was like, oh, well, but I got my honor roll sticker. Why don't you guys want to do it? You know, why don't you eat? It makes a little more sense now. I'm sure that probably wasn't the, the prevailing reason. It's probably because they were lease vehicles and dad didn't want to pay for the, the fee. But, you know, I'll take the benefit where I can get it, right? <laughs> so uh, I, I hope this was beneficial to you guys. Uh, maybe some of this is stuff you haven't thought about. Uh, this was something that when I was doing the, the episode two weeks ago about being aware of your surroundings and how to plan your your kind of your escape route and everything, I knew that I wanted to that this was going to be the companion episode to that because those, those two, these two concepts, the gray man concept and the environmental awareness concept really, um, pair well together and will do almost as much for you as any amount of firearms training will in terms of, uh, preserving your safety and, and, uh, and maximizing your, your, uh, protection the best part of your EDC really is that little mass between your ears. 
if you know what to look for, if you know how to think about things, if you know how to put things in perspective, uh, to make sure that you don't put yourself inadvertently into some kind of bad situation. So again, I hope that you guys found this helpful. Uh, you know, I certainly had, had a good time putting this together. Like I said, at the mall today, just kind of people watching checking some stuff out, putting some things back into perspective for me, since so many of us haven't really been out of the house. Um, I, it feels like in months, uh, you know, I don't know where you're at in the country or the world, but everyone's in lockdowns. Everyone's told not to go out. So going back out and re-experiencing the world does shine a light on some of those things and make you uh, realize, Hey, yeah, that is how that works. So that's all I got for you guys. Until next week, get out there, be prepared, train hard. Merry Christmas.